What's up guys, Viper FPV here, and today we are showing off the ISDT Q8 Smart Charger. And uh, it's a really, really tiny little charger. I can definitely say that. I was actually really, really shocked how tiny it was after I was told that it was like a 500 watt charger. And I was just like, wow, like look at this little thing. This thing is actually a lot smaller than you even think, even looking at the bench. When you get the little package, you're like, that's the charger. So, but yeah, this is what you pretty much get is the Q8 ISDT charger. It does go up to 500 watts, but that is thinking that you're going to be using a, um, I believe this is up to 30 volts of DC input. Um, so it does not use like an AC input like the um, HADA charger, like the H6. Um, it's only for either using a battery connected to it or having a, some type of power supply to supply the wattage. Um, so what I wanted to do is just kind of show you guys, you know, how it operates, what's so different about it, and really what, what my thoughts are of it. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here so we can get a look at the screen. And before I plug it in, I um, just wanted to kind of tell you what we have here. We do have the plug-in for the DC. That's the HT60. And then we also have a USB where we can do USB, um, like firmware updates and whatnot. Um, has a little fan in the back here. And then we just have one input. Uh, this is for, I believe this is up to one, let's say one, I think this is up to 8S uh, charging. So you can use a 8 cell, 8 cell. So any quad guys, I mean, do six cells. That's pretty much the most we go up to. Um, and then it has this um, XT60 that actually does have a, it has the smart, I guess the bat go or go bat um, protocol where it's pretty much a dead protocol, honestly. Um, it came out about two years ago or so, and they had it to where you could, it was like a chip inside the batteries. And then when you plugged in your battery to it, it pretty much told you some like, um, it kept data, it kept a charging rate. Um, it told you kind of how it was charging and the last time it was charged and all that type of stuff. Um, but really, the batteries are expensive and no one really, I mean, we destroy our batteries all the time in the quad industry. So I really didn't see that taking off anytime soon. And it was just really an added expense. So uh, it's kind of a novelty at this point to have that uh, go, uh, back go technology in it. Um, maybe they'll come out with something better or different in the future. Who knows? But us quad guys especially like i said before we destroy our batteries and really there's no point to really monitor them like that but so let's go ahead and uh, go into that the screen looks like and everything it's really just basic isdt all the way so it has all the beats you can see it right there what has it right here has this little like it's actually almost like the hada where it has this little like touch screen here but it's not really a touch screen it's like a battery I don't like this one at all on the ISDT. I'd rather have a jog wheel or touch screen, you know, actual touch screen or something. Because this thing, it just feels very like, even the screen here, it's on this corner, like the double side tape, whatever's holding it onto the actual case. It's kind of popping up a little bit. And you can, I don't know if you can hear that. It like squeaks and whatnot. So it kind of makes it feel a little cheap. I wish they would just go with like a one piece design where you're not pushing down on double side tape or whatever's on the other side to hold it to the screen. So what we got here is we um, we got our up to eight cells right here and we can pretty much do everything we can do. We can do charge, discharge, storage, DC power, and then we have destroy, which a lot of chargers actually don't have. Um, you can put it onto that and if you have a battery that's damaged, you can go ahead and discharge it to where um, you pretty much have zero volts and then you can go ahead and recycle it or whatever you need to do with it. So before I go ahead and uh, show you, you know, how it looks on when you're charging a battery, which all ICT charges look exactly the same. Um, let's go ahead and go over what the chemistry they call it. So we have um, lipos, the HV version. We have regular lipos. Then we have like the life batteries, um, lithium ion, uh, PB, NIM, and all that stuff. So all pretty much batteries that you want to charge, you can pretty much do it with this one. Um, the real uh, advantage of this thing is just kind of like the compatible, you know, how small it is, where this can fit into your bag. And I mean, it really would take up like absolutely no room. You could probably put this thing in your pocket. It's so small. Um, and it's actually really impressive for 500 watts. But so let's go ahead and uh, go over to um, charge a battery here. Let's go up to actually it'll automatically select it once I plug it in. So let me go ahead and just do that because that'll be easier for me. 
Uh, this is a four cell. So it does actually automatically detect it, but I was already in the screen. So, you know. And I'm just using a six cell I have lying around here. Um, go ahead and start. Oh, I have to plug the balance lead in. See? It actually has some protection. Let's go ahead and plug that in. And then uh, you can go ahead and start charging it. So that's pretty much the screen looks like when it's charging. Um, it's in like this orange. Um, oh. It also has... So you hold press the button right here to get into the main screen. And I think you go ahead and change this so that it's not so high. Yeah, 12 volts is fine, whatever. And then we got those are all the settings you can change in like the menu here. Calibration, back go, all that stuff. System info. Um, system info, Q8 just tells you pretty much what version, what firmware version it's on and all that stuff. So pretty much not really interested in that really. So let's go ahead and uh, show you guys what it looks like when it's charging. Um, let's click on start here. And then right here, um, it shows orange when it's charging. And then it goes to like a um, blue when it's balanced charging. And then it goes green when it's done. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, it shows you the voltage, the input voltage, uh, the temperature. And then it has the IR readings, which is actually real helpful if you're trying to detect if you have a bad battery or not. Um, but do I recommend the ISD Q8? Um, I don't know. When you have something like this guy here, the Hada H6 Pro, where it's about, I think, $20 more or so than this one, you have DC input where you can go ahead and, you know, poke up to any battery, any power supply, and get up to 750 watts, I believe this one is. Uh, 700 watts is this one. So DC, if you're at 30, you know, if they have a 30 volt power supply, you can go ahead and get that 750 watts for about 20 bucks more. Um, and then you also have the option if you're at your bench and you just have AC power, you can just go ahead and plug it into the wall and charge it off there. And this actually does have some extra capabilities like you can test servos and whatnot. Um, so I actually would probably recommend the Hata H6 Pro over the Q8. Um, besides, you know, all the other things you can do that are awesome with this thing, just the, I hate the screen. I hate how it's like double-sided on there and I feel like it's clicky every time I touch these buttons. It just feels really, just give me a jog wheel, touch screen, something better than that where I'm pushing down on the screen. Um, but that's really going to do it for um, the review of the ISDT Q8 Smart Charger. Um, if you're interested in picking one of these up, um, especially for the compact size, something you can put in your bag, um, I will leave an affiliate link down below. Uh, so go ahead and pick that up if you're interested. But to everybody else, uh, thank you for guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.